What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Hypertension. Oops, uh, apparently there was an audio issue uh, that caused me to be about twice as loud as I should be. I apologize for that. I, but once again, I am Hypertension, joined here by Rebel Fox. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> School is killing me. And now, uh, so, but now I get to take a break from that. I get to cast some UPL action, and I am excited as hell for it. We have Full Spectrum, one of the more hyped teams in this split of the UPL, versus a Upsurge Legacy team here in Team Fish Taco. Got to love both these teams. Obviously, you, you said it. Team Fish Taco, this legacy team that's you know, won plenty of games and even some of the series. As we've come through a lot of upsurge and seeing them this high is really nice. Of course, they lost last week against Orglis. Orglis, I believe, was also last year's champion or last season's champion, if I recall. So, I mean, they played against a really tough team, lost against a really tough team. They get a chance to bounce back against Full Spectrum, who on the other end of the spectrum, because they are full spectrum, of course, beat RMU, another one of these top teams and top contenders in mm -hmm. at least the collegiate scene. Yes, they absolutely did. RMU is one of those programs that is just synonymous with collegiate excellence. I don't remember if they've ever actually won a collegiate title, especially as of late, with the Titans like Columbia College, UC Irvine, and Maryville emerging, but they are still one of those names that you always have to look out for. And the fact that Full Spectrum beat them so convincingly in the 2-0 really speaks volumes to how hype this team is. And just looking at the roster, it's got Boris, otherwise known as Eclipse. It's got Winston, the scouting grounds uh, ju jungler. It's got Lutano in the, at the support role. It's got Sudsy in the mid lane. It's got Violus and AD Carry. These are all like top tier players. But on the other side, they are no slouches either. <laughs> no, yeah, you're not. Team Fish Taco certainly boasts a pretty solid roster in the top lane. You have Albus Knox, Maddie in that jungle position, Drew Dozer in the mid lane. 1-1-1-1-0-0-1-1-0-1. Also, for anybody that wants a better for that, I do believe that's O'Grave in binary. I could be wrong about that, so I'll have to be corrected by the player himself. But I'm going to call him O'Grave for the foreseeable future and slogan at that support role. Yeah, and again, as you see the standings on your screen, these are the current standings for the Upsurge Premier League in their respective divisions, with these teams being in the Infernal Division. As we said, there was that loss this week. And as you can see, the rest of them, it just becomes apparent with a six-week regular season, that's why these these matches matter so much. But as we are getting ready to get into the pro draft, what are some picks that you're looking to look out for for these teams? Yeah, okay. So on the side of TFT, they have a couple of champions, specifically top lane. There's a lot of split push champions that can come through. Fiora is the one that comes to mind for the side of Albus Knox. He plays it very, very much in solo queue. I'm certain he would love to get his hands on that, especially if they can bait Eclipse into some of these uh, tankier picks, something like the Orn, something like the Scion, something along those lines. That could be really, really good matchup for the Fiora to at least scale later on into the game. Drew Dozer also plays a Cassio, or uh, my apologies, a Katarina. I would love to see it. I doubt we're going to get it to come out here, but certainly going to be a good one for there. On the opposite side, I mean, full spectrum, they have so, so much. The big thing I'm going to highlight is their jungler, Winston. He plays a lot of really heavy dueling junglers. He likes to get in the face of the opposition. You're talking the like the uh, lease. He likes to play the Olaf, the lease in the Rexai. He never wants to be low tempo. He's always looking to fight, always looking to get around the map as best they can. Absolutely, and as we are starting up the pro draft, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be full spectrum on the blue side, it is Team Fish Taco on the red, and we already do see that a very aggressive jungler, the Olaf, taken off the board. Both junglers like to play that quite a bit. Olaf, I, I assume, is not high enough priority for full spectrum for them to actually, you know, go right for it. This is actually zooming through this trap so far, so they're very fast. They know exactly what they want to ban. Uh, they absolutely do, and... As you said, they fly off the boards. Let me just go ahead and repeat them for, all, for any audio listeners. We have Fiora, Thresh, and Olaf as the bands for Full Spectrum. Team Fish Taco have banned Pantheon, Set, and Aphelios. Absolutely clarity in design, if there ever was it, in Aphelios. No sarcasm whatsoever. But it does appear as if the Lucian is the pickup for Sp Full Spectrum in that AD carry role. Yeah, it could also be flexed still into the mid lane and top mm -hmm. lane. It is a rare triple flex. It's, it's very rarely in that mid lane you see it. Most of the time it's either top or ADC, mm -hmm. but certainly does well into a lot of the meta ADCs at the moment. So I like that quite a bit. My question is, does TFT kind of go for the standard bot lane pick here? Do they go jungle mid, something along those lines? Mm -hmm. uh, what do they attempt to do in response? It looks like the Gragas hover is what they're opting for. Again, very strong jungler, something that I'm sure Maddie would like to get his hands on. 
that's pretty high priority for jungler pick, especially with the counter pick can come through. Yeah, and this jungle mid synergy is going to be off the charts here for the side of Team Fish Taco. These are two players, Matty Moo and Drew Dozer, who have been playing together for quite a long time. So these, so getting a pick like Gragas that can control the tempo of the match, that is a very good thing for them. That is. I'm curious to see whether they want priority on an ADC pick that is a little more high tier, something like the Senna, the MF, something along those lines. Instead, they opt for the Shen. That's uh, it's an Albus Nox. Hmm. Uh, it's more of the tanky champion he likes to play. He doesn't typically play lots of that in solo queue, but when he has his hands on it, it's either the Orn or the Shen. So obviously, might be looking to protect single target carries. Look for an ADC or a mid laner that really want to do that, like want to get into the mid game more than anything else. Yeah, and the biggest pick I can think of right now that you really want to get to that mid to late game with the Aphelios being panned out is that Zaya, which you really have to consider could be that third pick of the first round for them. But on the side of full spectrum, they lock in the Lee Sin, which was pretty unanimously agreed upon by the LEC's pros as the most broken character in the game. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that video, ladies and gentlemen, but it's actually a pretty good watch. Yeah, the Lee Sin pick, certainly a very popular champion. Pretty much mm -hmm. everybody everywhere <laughs> takes it across every league. It doesn't matter who you are, what ELO you're at. Everybody loves to play that Lee Sin. It feels so good in the hands of somebody that's nice. And again, full spectrum with the Winston. He loves to take this and duel with it. Has Rakan as well. Ooh, now this is an old time throwback. It absolutely is. And now you have Yasuo Gragas. That is a powerful combo, especially as we talked about that mid-jungle synergy earlier. These are two players that know each other like the backs of their hands. So it's really imperative that they have such a powerful pick. And yeah, really? oh, go ahead. TFT banning away the Zaya, it seems to indicate that they think that's a Lucian in a solo lane. It's entirely possible that or they're trying to pinch off the pool to make sure that if it is the loot, like they don't have options to go for to flex the Lucian somewhere else. So they have to go for something like that. The Draven being a bandway, I think, does indicate that they're willing to take the Lucian there so they get better mm -hmm. picks. And now the Zaya, the Senna and the Draven are off the board for TFT and they kind of pinch themselves off. But it was worth it to make sure the Lucian's down there. Yeah. And if you're talking about uh, 80 carries that need to be protected, I don't think that they get any squishier and more vulnerable than a misfortune firing off the bullet time so that will be the shen protecting the misfortune we'll have to see though if it is a shen support or a shen top lane i'm curious about that as well the other big thing is that um right now this team has a really spectacular team fight with the yasuo gragas misfortune combination of ultimates they need a little more cc Ooh. to kind of tie everything together silas gets picked up now he's actually been playing sudsy has been playing this ridiculously in solo mm -hmm. queue so i fully expected something like this to come out and it's gotten stronger slowly. They're continuing to buff it back into a state that it feels good. But there's so many ultimates to steal on TFT that you got to be just wa like watering at the mouth right now if you're suddenly. Yeah, to think side. about it. You have the stand united. You have the last <laughs> breath. You have the explosive cask. You have the bullet time. That's nuts. <laughs> Yeah, you have a ridiculous... So yeah, you can go cross-map with the Shen ultimate and just follow something like that. You have the team fight ultimates with those things that you just went through. It's a really good pick. They also opt mm -hmm. to blind Camille here, which is something that's pretty interesting to see. They're going into the Shen, most likely. As you said, it could be flexed. And it's not a terrible matchup either way. I know Camille, back in the day when she played against Shen, used to do W Max. I don't know if that's the case anymore. Well, the reason that it was the W Max, and I believe it does actually persist to this day, is mainly because of Shen's uh, spirit visage. Uh, no, Spirit Visage, uh, Spirit's Refuge, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ooh. the Spirit's Refuge helps block it. Yeah. They, and also, apparently, keep... I'm sorry, that is actually a mistake pick, ladies and gentlemen. It is a support Shen, but that is an Aatrox in the top lane. As your screen is about to update here in just a moment, that is going to be a top lane Aatrox and a support Shen for the side of Team Fish Taco. That's a shame. I really wanted to see the Yumi. I thought it's not super defensive. It does give Misfortune a little bit more poking power in the laning phase, but it would have mm -hmm. gone well. But yeah, as you said, the Shen in the bottom lane, it's good to get aggressive, especially against the Rakan. There's not actually not a ton the Rakan can do to counteract the engage of the Shen unless he waits for the engagement to come through ahead of time, then gets the W afterwards. Uh -huh. um, apart from that, the Aatrox going into the top lane up against this Camille, that's an interesting lane in its own right. There's a lot that both champions can do, so I expect to see a lot of skirmishing and just constant poking back and forth between Eclipse and Albus not absolutely and this is a very exciting setup here for these two teams looking over at as you said at the side of team fish taco with uh albus nox getting that atrox you said about like eclipse getting the camille 
I don't like the Aatrox into Camille as much as I do Shen, just because I like mm -hmm. having that Spirit's Refuge to protect myself from the main out source of, as I, the main output of Camille damage being her auto attacks. Mm -hmm. But Aatrox is so strong at the moment that he he is a good pick in general here. I don't know this matchup in particular, but overall could be worse. But looking at it, mid jungle, what are your opinions on this setup? This setup between the two. Okay, so so Lee Sin and Silas have a lot of, not only a combination of CC, but they have a really good combination of damage and even sustain through fights. So when you're talking in the pure 2v2, the snap engage from Yagas, or Yasuo Gragas is super, super strong. But when you're talking about consistent fighting, especially if those ultimates are not there, Silas and Lee Sin will absolutely devastate the two of them when it comes to some of these invades because there's a lot earlier power in these two champions than you would see, especially before itemization starts to come through. So what I want to see is early Quave Clear from Silas to try to push the Yasuo in roam around with Lee Sin to control the middle of the map so you have access to Rift Herald Dragon or at least priority on wards for those areas and that's what I really want to see now if it gets into the mid game and you start to get some ionization you get to kind of like the jump on the Lee Sin and the Silas they do get a little squishy especially when you're talking about that last breath as you were talking about with the Yasuo with the Gragas Peril combination mm -hmm. there is a ton of damage loaded front loaded especially into that but there's no response that can come through so you have to be a little bit more willing to take the one-on-ones, two-on-twos if you're Silas Lee Sin, especially before items and alts come on. Absolutely. You have to skirmish Ooh. early if you are at full spectrum. You have to fight as a unit if you are TFT. Now, looking at the bottom lane, we haven't really talked about that as much. Shen is not a very common pick in this lane anymore. He used to be super meta. I remember back in Season 5, everyone would pick the reworked Shen, but now... This is, i say this is a support Shen in a meta mostly dominated by long range engagers. Yes, Shen has a shadow dash, but I don't think that that quite compares to Rakan's grand entrance. Yeah, certainly Rakan's grand entrance does quite a bit more in terms of, like, he chains it together with so much more, because Shen really just has the taunt, and then after that, there's no more CC that really comes through from the Shen, aside from the slow from his Q. The entrance from a Rakan into a fight and the ability to CC not only one member, but so many members, and the mobility of him afterwards means that he's not just a cinder block you throw at somebody, mm -hmm. he's this very, like, fluid, flowing, engaged champion that's a lot harder to stick onto. The early laning phase, again, from Shen is extremely strong. It is very, very, um, like, useful to have if you have an engaged champion or a strong champion early the one question i have is like lucian if he has the dash if they get the level two quickly it's really hard for shen to try to find an engagement on these two and i'm not sure that the ultimate from shen is going to support the rest of this map entirely too well most of the time these engagements are going to be uh, like very over very quickly or they're going to turn away the, the opposite direction so i don't know what the shen ultimate at the support role is as helpful in that top lane because you can't support any sort of dive on the bottom side of the map, any sort of objective play in that sense, or at least not as effectively. Well, one thing you can do, though, with that Shen being in the bottom lane, is you can have the MF pull back to tower while coordinating a top or mid lane as uh, a gank. Have him go on top, uh, say have a uh, Slogan mm -hmm. go on top of Matty on that Gragas. He goes in with the Body Slam. He's already had the Stain United on top of him. Body Slam hits, then the Shadow Dash hits. That should be lo long enough knock up for either the Steel Tempest or the Darkened Blades to land to land a third CC ability. Yeah, you can certainly chain it together, especially in terms of single targets. Um, and, and there are plenty of those in this game, which is the one good thing about the Shen. Is it, whoever is frontlining at the time, be it the Rakan, the Camille, the, uh, the Lee Sin, or the Silas, they are low range, and so Shen's going to have access as well as the Aatrox, as you said, the Gragas, the Asshole. All of them have access to their CC. You're not talking about like a siege composition here from the side of um, full spectrum. They've got a very low range composition, even with the Lucian in their midst. So it's a little harder for them to try to deny the CC that can come out from the side of TFT in this one. So you will see that, if, especially if they start rolling, get these items coming through, that CC is going to be a difficult thing to manage. And so then you're going to see you have to play a lot more carefully if you're on the side of full spectrum. Yes, you absolutely do. And guys, uh, w before we head into game, let us have a little bit of a word from one of our fantastic sponsors. In fact, this sponsor has been with us a long time. Guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Kono Keyboards. If you're looking to take your game to the next level, it all starts with your peripherals. From keyboards to keycaps, mice and more, our friends at Kono's, they have you covered. Kono works with the world's best designers, inventors, and makers to bring you some of the best gaming equipment around. Kono have been huge supporters of us here at Upsearch and have made generous contributions to our prize pools for many a split now. If you want to find a new keyboard or more for your setup, 
we can't recommend anybody better than Kono. For more information, head over to Kono.store to check out all they have to offer. That's K-O-N-O dot store. Kono, discover amazing products. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with game one between Full Spectrum and Team Fish Taco. I'll take charge. Fight. Who's next to line? Can you make that climb? Now where's the time? Get out of your mind. Raise up the lights. We all here tonight. So let's do it right. Yo, we came here to fight. Who's next to line? Can you make that climb? Now where's the time? This world is mine. Raise up the lights. We all here tonight. So let's do it right. Yo, we came here to fight. Positive, negative. I'll take charge and shake eyes. Remain great while I pay homage. They always said that pressure can make diamonds. So keep climbing all the way up. That's where you'll find me. Right next to the legends. I go off my brethren. Said goodbye to the old me. I'ma make sure that you know me. After this, here you gon' owe me. Did choose a game and chose me. You know what G owe me to an OG. Let's go. Fight. Who's next in line? Can you make that climb? Now where's the time? Get out of your mind. Raise up the lights. We all here tonight. So let's do it right. Yo, we came here to fight. Who's next in line? Can you make that What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, I am Hypertension. Uh, unfortunately, we did experience a slight issue with the client. Uh, 
Unfortunately, there was an issue when setting runes for a player on Team Fish Taco, so he had to. I uh, say so. We have. I uh, say so the teams have agreed to remake the mat. I uh, say so remake the game and go through it. There will be a slight delay due to the remake of a tournament game lobby, so we will get into that as quickly as possible. We apologize for this delay. It was not. I uh, say so unfortunately, it was not an issue that we uh, really could have foreseen or prevented. So, in the meantime. Uh, sorry about that. So, Rebel, talk to me again. Why don't we put the draft back on the screen for a second, and we sure. can talk more about this, because there was also a switch that we saw. Yeah. Um, so we did see at the end, uh, we, we saw Sudzy was actually on mm -hmm. the Camille versus Eclipse being on the Silas. Now, again, I don't know whether that's a better matchup for the Silas into the Aatrox versus being into the Yasuo in the mid lane. It's also possible entirely that Sudzy wants to play at top lane into the Aatrox and wants to take the Camille there, and they're going to flex Eclipse and Sudzy being in different lanes in top or mid. It's also entirely possible the Camille feels better into the, uh, the Yasuo matchup, and that's what they're really looking for. And the control from Lee Sin and uh, Camille is really, really good. It actually provides quite a bit of CC in the early game for Robes as well. So it, it, they fill very similar roles. I guess it's just a preference of whatever champion they want to take into the Aatrox versus Yasuo matchup, and Sudzy clearly wants the Camille for one of these two yeah and that was how it ended up ladies and gentlemen so the the draft that you see currently on your screen is updated to the current point of what was in the game based on the players that are lined up to where eclipse is on the silas sudzy is on the camille now whether or not they go to those assigned lanes that is up for i say we will see that in just a minute but currently that is what we have to to go with yeah, that is correct. We, we, we won't know the lane assignments quite yet until we get into this game, and that's a little something. We can't talk about pure team composition, though, and I can try to we can pick each other's brains about this kind of thing. Because, I, again, my big problem with this composition on the Team Fish Taco side is this Aatrox. I really don't think the Aatrox fits with what they're going for in this one. I guess it might be a lane matchup preference, and maybe you could discuss with me more. But, I mean, the Gragas, Yasuo, Misfortune, and Shen, there's really points to team fighting composition. They want to yeah. try and team fight as best they can, but they have no CC setup. If they go Ornn in the top lane, they feel like, it feels like not only as strong, if not stronger, champion, and sets up more of what they want to do with this Gragas, Yasuo, Misfortune. So, I don't know what the Aatrox thought is apart from maybe Albus Nox's comfort. Yes. And um, to those in chat asking, unfortunately, we cannot show a timer right now because we do not have a concrete time. It will all depend on the loading aspects of the various computers, how long it takes to get set up. Uh, it is not, unfortunately, a concrete thing. We also don't know if there will be any more client issues. So the game starting will, is a little bit iffy right now, especially with the client having so many issues. Apparently, this is happening across all leagues as, as say, and all matches as we are getting reports of other teams also experiencing issues. So, fact is, I would like to talk about another thing, right? Uh, so, you, you talked about the Silas and Camille. We talked about that. Uh, talk to me, in particular, about the bottom lane and how this sort of changes with, the ma uh, say, with, say, a Camille in the mid lane versus a Silas in the mid lane. Yeah, so Silas is ultimate on the bottom side of the map. So say he were to be in the mid lane up against this Yasuo. So in order to affect the bot lane in the most effective way, you would either have to have Yasuo's ultimate combined with a Rakan engage so that you can get the knockup and then immediately jump into the lane, or you'd have to have the Grog's ultimate and you can use that explosive cask as a way to knock back the bot lane mm -hmm. if he wants to run to the bottom side. Now the question is, Silas, Lee Sin, Lucian, Rakan up against Gragas, Yasuo, Misfortune, Shen, if the Gragas Yasuo, this fortune, really get the engage, if they're the ones to the fight first or they get the setup much better, that's when they're going to win the fight, 100%. But if it becomes a scrappy fight with Silas, Lee Sin, um, the Lucian, and the Rakan, that's a fight they'll win all day because there's more consistent damage in the Lee Sin, the Silas, the Lucian, and Rakan can sustain through a fight with all the shields and things that he brings to the fight. So it's all about that initial engagement from the side of TFT. If Camille is in the mix, then there's an interesting way that this fight can change in that you can split off members with the Hextech ultimatum. So you can separate this fight right down the middle with the Camille, and that might be an interesting way to allow Lucian to buy more space for himself and maybe kick somebody else out of the fight. So you can take what would be a four-on-four, -four, turn it into a two-on-two -two with Lucian and Rakan against either of the two that they would like to fight in that case, and then fight their way through. And that's how I would see the fight change. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, we actually only have about a minute, 10 seconds left on the spectator delay for the league client. Hopefully it works out this time and we can get the game started as soon as possible. But with that, we will be right back in just a minute with Team Fish Taco versus Full Spectrum. Welcome 
And we are finally on to Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen. It is Full Spectrum versus Team Fish Taco. I am Hypertension, joined by the Rebel Fox. And on the blue side, we have Full Spectrum Esports with Eclipse in the top lane, Winston in the jungle, Sudzy in the mid lane, Vilas at AD Carry, and Lutano at support. Yeah, and on the red side, we do have TFT with Albus Knox in the top lane, Maddie in the jungle, Drew Dozer in mid lane. I'm calling him O-Grade, but there's some binary there for anybody that wants to speak at ADC and slogan one at support role. O-Grave sounds good to me, and I will <laughs> stick with it because I'm not going to call him 11 the entire game. That is a Stranger Things character. That is... Don't want to get those too confused, certainly. Now, I, somebody could correct me potentially in the chat because it is either O-Grave or O-Acute. I know it's one of the two. I'm pretty sure it's O-Grave, though, so that's what I'm going to call him until somebody corrects me. And I'm always wrong about this, so it's almost certainly Acute. So if somebody figures that out, please be happy to tell us because I'd be happy to change it. But Absolutely, as yes. now. We are seeing a little bit of oh, wow. action there, a little bit of training. Drew Dozer took the worst of it, but there's no time left to back before the minions got here. Yeah, there were two members, so he had Misfortune and Shen there ready to go. The Sudzy has pressed the attack right now, and he had the Q upgrade to start the lane with. So he gets the press the attack off because he gets the double auto cancel, which is a really nice way to start the lane. Now quarter health down is Drew Dozer. Has to play more careful into Sudzy here. Yes, he does. And particularly with the Steel Tempest being a fairly slow-moving projectile, I think most of us can agree. With Camille having that health advantage, he's going to not only be back, but throwing out a projectile that should be easily dodged. That he is. We see a little bit of motion, both junglers. So an important bit was neither or uh, neither jungler started with a bot side. Hang on, let me see if this fight goes anywhere. Yeah. Neither jungler started with a bottom side uh, leash for specific reasons. Really, mostly the, the, the thing is, is I expected this from the Misfortune and the Shen because they want the early level two to look for the engage. There it is. Yeah, they're looking for the engage. Lutano takes a lot of damage. Vias being the target for that bouncing bullet, but there's nothing to, else to come out of it. So you said that they would, you know, ta take the bot lane leash, and now we're seeing why. They want to play aggressive up in this lane. That's really needed. Again, the, the Shen early game is a super strong thing to have under your belt. Actually, you fight in the top side. Yeah, it looks like Albus Knox is looking for Eclipse. Boris is an animal, but he's running away from Albus Knox. Not quite able to catch up in time. But we'll have to see how that top lane continues to develop. Yeah, it looks like oh, basically what happened was Eclipse there, or Boris as you've been calling him. Yeah, he just got level 3, which makes it a lot easier for him to duel. 
Actually, it's a Time Warp Tonic with that potion as well. It's really big. Yeah, Eclipse goes low. The minion auto attacks are coming in. The flash and the auto for first blood over to the side of Team Fish Taco. Yeah, okay, so I don't know exactly what the health threshold is for the Silas to be able to get that enhanced heal. I will have to check it really quickly. Yeah, it's at 40% health. I think it's entirely possible that his Time Warp Tonic combined with the Corrupting Potions that got him way too high for that W to get the enhanced heal. Possibly fight. Possibly. Now Lutano and Vilas going in on to Oakrave, who ends up biting the dust. Vilas dies for his efforts, but still that kill goes over to the AD carry of one side and the jungler of the other. Yeah, nice little play. Nice trade back and forth. Of course, the aggression on a misfortune, a way to push her out of lane. And that was, as you said, the ADC kill for the jungle kill, but that feels nice for the Gragas. Getting an early Runic Echoes not only increases the clear speed, but the damage between the Gragas and the Yasuo control in the mid lane is going to be a massive part of how this game's mid game goes. So having those kills on Gragas is super influential. Yes, it is. As we are seeing some aggression up in the top side, it doesn't appear that Albus Knox knows that Winston is waiting in the wings while a fight is going on in mid lane. It looks like that there's going to be a mid lane collapse at the same time as a top lane one. In the top side, it is Winston going in onto Albus Knox. That's going to be the Sonic Wave actually missing, as will that chain strike. Here comes Sudsy trying to, and he actually did walk away from it. I thought he was going uh, to be in trouble there for a bit. Yeah, nice plays in both the top and the mid lane. Albus Knox barely walking out with health left. Mm -hmm. It looked like Eclipse threw that last chain, as you said, towards the exit path of where Albus Knox was going to walk, but there was no continuous damage. Lutano. Yeah, now Lutano helping Vilas go in onto O Grave, who is put into the grave. Yeah, it feels pretty bad on that way. Lutano had his flash readily available, and once he has the grand entrance in the flash, it's hard for any ADC to get away. Misfortune, no escape tools whatsoever to get herself out of that situation. So Venus walks away with a second kill now. Um, and this is really counteractive to what you would want. Again, if you have the Misfortune and the Shen in that bottom side, you expect a little more dominant of a laning phase, but they've been able to pressure super well with not only abating that first engagement from Shen, but then also the combined aggression onto Misfortune twice now, denying her a lot of these minion, uh, a lot of the experience. Now you're seeing that huge minion advantage. It's about 21 minions here uh, for the Lucian over the Misfortune combined with those two kills. It just puts her in a terrible place for this early game. Yeah, and that's part of what you have to worry about when you have a Lucian and a Rakan. This is just one of the most overly mobile bottom lanes you can have in League of Legends. Yeah, it's uh, it's scary mobile in their ability to not only engage from a far distance, but also the just the amount of damage they can put as they're moving forward is pretty nuts. So they can play um, like a kite back style. They can also play a kite forward style, which they're putting out damage the entire time they're walking forward. And either way, it's not simple to deal with. Oh. Yeah, this is the top lane going no better for the side of TFT than is the... Uh, bottom lane because e Eclipse is just looking to ram his fist down Albus's throat, but he's Eclipse is actually now taking the worst of this trade. Looks like Winston is waiting in the wings. He's going to walk up. We'll see if this is going to lead into anything. It's now Ganks on the opposite side of the map. Looks like th that Maddie will be there. Nothing coming out of it. Yeah. Continue poking away on that bottom lane. No aggression can come through though because Shen has the flash. But yeah. dive. Topside now dive. there's a big dive into the top side. Looks like Eclipse gonna be able to get out alive. His jungler not so lucky. Winston gets killed. So it's a one for one dive under tower. Really risky by full spectrum. That it was. The one thing they do is they deny Albus Knox a lot of the minions that just crash under tower with advantage. Ooh, fight, fight, fight. Here's a mid lane fight. That ignite ticking down. Sudsy gets him with the tactical sweep. Yeah, they ended up picking up the Mountain Drake. Here comes the potential fight. The bottom side is now Vilas is here. Sudsy's coming on the backside. Slogan is taking down to the Ignite. Vilas is as well. That's a one for one thus far. Here comes Sudsy dealing out damage to Maddie, but those bouncing bullets are deadly. Maddie ends up picking it up off of that casking, uh, said that casking slammed down into the face of Sudsy. Lutano, my friend, you don't have damage, but he, what you do have is a jungler waiting in the wings. Winston coming in, Sonic Wave, cocked by the body block, but Lutano still picks up the kill onto Maddie. Overall, I believe that was a three for three. Yeah, I think all things said and done. Well, plus the mid-game kill, so I'm not sure if that actually was uh, equated into it as well. You're right, three for three sounds about right. Not to mention the dragon going the way of TFT during that process as well. Fair amount of minions were denied now. Pew both um, and it will be eventually MF because she is going to be struck in this lane. Uh, but also that Aatrox in the top lane. So some gold is going to be shifted around. But that early Mountain Drake, uh, not a bad little pickup here from TFT. 
team mid lane fight or favorite fight. Yeah, and it looks like Drew Dozer. He wants Lutano there. That's going to be a knockup going down, so he was not able to cast that last breath. The taunt goes down onto Lutano, so that's Slogan picking up the kill there. Vilas is the next target. Did not get to land the full... I uh, say, did not even get to activate the last breath. No other kills come out. Just a one for zero. But Drew Dozer, he is hunting. He is stalking them, trying to chase them down. Yeah, and again, the, the 4v4 is difficult to play on both sides, and especially if you get the engagement here, Sudzy, looking for more on the bot side. Looking for more on the bot side, but it looks like there's just going to be the standoff here for just a minute more until Maddie gets up here. Is now in the top side. Eclipse might have bitten off more than he could cue. That's going to be Albus Knox absolutely 1v1-ing the, his enemy top laner. Yeah, it put himself closer. I don't think he needed to take that second chain. I know he wanted the damage and a little bit of that CC, but unfortunately, it put him in range for that third key from Aatrox to get not only more damage, but additional CC. And that was plenty to work with for Albus Knox flashing into the final kill onto Eclipse. And again, I really don't know why the Silas was flexed to the top lane into this pure matchup against the Aatrox. It's not a lot better than the Yasuo matchup. It just must be that Sudzy feels comfortable in this matchup in the mid lane. And hopefully, he can start to kind of apply the pressure he needs to, because otherwise, this Yasuo and this Gragas, once this Gragas hits level 6, is going to be difficult to deal with. And the bot lane is starting to get back from where they were. They were down quite, they're actually down a thousand gold, but still, that team fight went their way. Yeah, and looking at it now, they are now down less than, I say less than uh, that number, just barely, I think. Yeah, just about 800 gold. But now, it looks like Barco, that would be O'Grave, is in a little bit of a tough spot. Two members on top of him. That's going to be the explosive cask. Eclipse gets cut down. It is his last breath today. Lutino goes in onto Drew Dozer. The baby cage has been dropped. The damage is down, and so is Drew Dozer. The Hextech ultimatum was popped there, so no able to defend from O'Grave there. That means that he's going to pick up Sudzy on the backside. I believe overall that was a two for one in favor of Team Fish Taco. Yeah, but slowly Team Fish Taco is coming back from this early game. They lost a couple of kills early on, lost some of the gold. The gold is now equalized and the fights are really starting to go in their favor because, again, the control of the Gragas Yasuo around all of these fights combined with the consistent damage, the ultimate for Misfortune, and the shielding and the CC that can come from Shen make it so difficult for this consistent fight to work its way forward. You saw in that last one, Winston was available, Velas was available, Sudsy was trying to do his best to do more damage as the fight continued, but they weren't able to get the angles because there's enough body blocking from Albus, Knox, and Maddie to deny any of that damage coming through. So you have to be, uh, again, that initial engagement, if it sticks, it's very hard to come back from that, and that happened this time because Eclipse went down very early. You need to try to make sure that that doesn't happen in order for the side of full Spectrum to win some of these skirmishes. As a wise man once said, you must stay alive so you can thrive. Looks like Slogan trying to stay alive as best he can. Use the Shadow Dash to get out. That is going to be the Dragon's Rage Kick on to O'Grave, who pops his stopwatch. Very good defensive pop there by the AD carry of Team Fish Taco. Yeah, and the, the Shen ultimate was picked up by Silas in that last fight, and they were able to use it kind of aggressively. I don't know that Winston was able to get the full engagement he wanted to start that fight. Otherwise, that could have gone very differently. Uh, but as you said, yeah, the perfect use of the stopwatch under tower, especially with the Predator Grog is heading towards the top side, was more than enough to dissuade any sort of fight from coming through up there. That was so, so good. They do rotate Velas here. They have control of the Rift Herald, so they might be able to get enough plates and uh, towers to make it absolutely worth it. But certainly the fight got shut down. It did, and right now, we are seeing that bottom lane pop out just in the AD carry roll at an 1,100 gold lead. We're seeing about a 400 gold deficit at the support roll. It balances out a little bit, but still, Vilas is a dangerous man on the map. Whenever he joins a fight, he has to be the target for TFT. That he does. Super strong member. It really, they're going to funnel most of the gold to the team because he's the only real range threat on the scene. So he's the hardest to get this engagement into when you're talking about the combination of the explosive cast, the last breath from Yasuo, and those kinds of things. But on the opposite side, oh, I say the still didn't come through. But Albus Knox feels really, really good in a side lane right now. He actually is the most gold in the game of anybody, I think. Oh, no, not quite. He's not quite ahead of Velas, but certainly uh, in that side lane, there is no one champion that can really respond to him at the moment. So he feels perfectly fine playing more of a 1-4 game where the rest of his team can win fights as he split pushes on the side of the map. Absolutely, and that split push threat will start to build as the game goes on. You want to leave a carry like that isolated, but when there's one opposing it, uh, it, it can get very messy fast, especially if that opposing carry likes to bring down a jungler like, say, a Gragas or a Lee Sin. 
Ah, things could get messy really quick there. So split pushing it still carries a lot of threat with it. But looking at the top lane, looks like First Tower will go over to the side of Full Spectrum here in just a moment as Eclipse is getting ganked in the bottom. That's going to be the tip of the Shadow Dash catching Eclipse while the Bullet Storm seals his doom. Yeah, unfortunately, they're, they're not only behind the turret take, but also the Rift Herald was not used on the initial engagement. So he's now fighting in the mid lane. Fighting in the mid lane, lane, but it looks like both will end up surviving, at least for now. Yeah, well off tempo right now is the side of TFT. They had no, they're, they're absolutely got out rotated here. Mm -hmm. And now actually might lose even more of this interior tower on the inhibitor because they're trying to respond with just one tower on the bottom side of the map. I don't think it's going to work. No, not at all. Yeah, when you lose half through. your tower, I'll say half the health of your oh. inhibitor tower, actually that's closer to about 75%. That's insane trade there for not even a full tower in the bottom lane. Eclipse looks like he's going to make it in time. This is yeah, absolutely mention, great rotations from the side of Full Spectrum. And there's still plates on that mid tower, so Sudzi was able to pick up a little bit more gold there. Uh, you know, Drew Dozer tried to make an engagement onto Sudzi, and it just did nothing to him. So uh, again, they can play the map rotation right now. They're doing a very good job of getting some of the gold, uh, at least the ambient gold that's sitting on the map for themselves. And again, now with that pressure in the top lane, uh, you, you almost have to set Aatrox up there to make sure that there is no way that Drew Dozer just gets aggressed on there. And because of that, now your Aatrox is one of your stronger members, can't at all uh, contribute to a teamfight when his TP's down. Thankfully, the Dragon's off the map for the next few minutes, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but certainly, uh, when the Aatrox has the TP back up, has to look for these fights, otherwise you're losing a fair amount of your damage. Absolutely, and on the flip side with Eclipse, he could just look at for for Slogan, and then immediately go split pushing <laughs> with both his TP and Albus Knox's TP on cooldown, knowing that he has the stand united to join the fight, whereas Albus Knox, he's on an island alone. Yeah, that's correct. You do have that. So with Wait, that... Island alone. So with that in mind, this game is sort of like slowed a little bit. This is the longest period that we've had without any sort of action. And one thing I'd like to talk about is just the sheer prowess of uh, the primary carries on each of these teams. Thus far, we've seen Albus Knox pop off against a player who most people would you know consider to be better than. This is Eclipse, the guy who for a time was on Cloud9 Academy. And he's been playing immaculately in this game thus far. He's been doing a great job of playing up against, um, or yeah, he's been doing. Elvis Knox has been doing a great job up against Eclipse. I think part of that is due to the matchup that he's got again. The Aatrox into the Silas matchup is one that absolutely winnable by the Aatrox, especially with that early advantage that he gained. Feels pretty bad to be the Silas in that one, and also the Silas has just been bullied in every fight. He really hasn't even had an opportunity to like contribute damage or do anything. He pretty much gets popped immediately every time, so it's not even like he's picking up ambient gold from some of the tower pushes or from some of the skirmishes going his way. He's literally dying at every single junction, and he's kind of the reason why they're able to make a lot of the plays around the map. But unfortunately, that puts him in a hole compared to his laner. And it does, and on the flip side. I love the way Vilas has been playing this game. He has gotten caught out twice, but one of those was a sack death at least. So it was more of a worth trade because he still got the gold where his enemy laner did not. But now looking ahead towards the next fight, you have to imagine that those two are the people to focus down. But if Alba stays in a side lane, how can you focus the Aatrox when he isn't even there? And not there will be actually dive coming down. The Here we line. go. As you said, dive coming down. Drew Dozer dead as a doornail already. The TP blown by Albus Knox. Here comes the engage from the rest of Team Fish Taco. They're looking for it. The Predator has been popped by Maddie, but it doesn't look like they're going to actually pull the trigger. Yeah. Not able to get a solid engagement. I think a fair amount of that was Gragas really, really wanted to come in E and Flash and be able to get a good engagement. But the Yasuo being dead means a fair amount of your damage is taken out of that snap engagement. There's no follow-up directly to the Gragas ultimate. Combine that with the fact the Q from Lee Sin from, from Winston in this particular case was really good because if Maddie wants to jump in, he has about a moment, maybe maybe a few frames of ability to try to dodge the oh. Q from Lee Sin by that, yeah. Uh, wow, Vilas had to get the heck out of dodge because Ograve was already threatening to just nuke him. And that is the bullet time taken by Eclipse. So that's now a very dangerous bear, uh, as a dragon to try and take if you are the side of Team Fish Taco. Even if it's pulled out of the out of the alcove, you're gonna have to face the bullet time. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, also, there's no bullet time on the opposite side because, of course, Ograve just used his to try to bat fight. Now, they're going to have Yasuo, and they're going to have Grogis back up, so uh, should have more than enough team fighting tools for this dragon when it is contested. Uh, this is a really big one, though, in my mind, for TFT because, of course, the Cloud Drake gives that uh, ult 
cooldown percentage, and a lot of their engage comes from that cooldown. Of course, Shen's ultimate, very, very high cooldown early on, and then you want the Yasuo to be able to ult every single fight, if not more than one time in a fight. Misfortune to do the same, Grog is to do the same, and the more cooldown on your ultimate you have, the easier it is to team fight for this squad. So I want to see them contest for this and get this flat stats, because it's something they desperately need. Absolutely is. And now we're starting to see this dance of vision around the dragon. Sudzi able to dodge out the Steel Tempest. As those two are going to start fighting up again. These split push are so powerful. And Drew Dozer takes a chunk. Lots of damage onto the mid laner of Team Fish Taco. But it is Sudzi of Full Spectrum who dies first. So falls Drew Dozer. Now it's just a massive fight. That's going to be the bullet time channel by Eclipse. It takes down Maddie. This is going to be a three versus four for the moment. And oh, Grave. Oh, man. You were are in oh so much trouble sonic wave there's the kick there's the damage winston is on a killing spree yeah nice little fight setup there uh first off tft were really fast to respond at least maddie was really fast to respond to that and they were able to get the kill onto sudzy after sudzy had just destroyed drew dozer in that initial 1v1 but unfortunately there's no hex tech ultimatum to dodge out that initial cask and i think that was his first mistake sudzy used that very early on in the fight to try to get more damage out to kill the yasuo quick and instead of using it to dodge an important ability, which I think would have been more pertinent to the fight. The good thing is, is those two went down because the rest of the side of Full Spectrum got there so much faster, it was simple to clean up the fight. And then the bigger thing also, Eclipse did a fantastic job. He had the Misfortune ultimate. He put this entire thing down to separate off Albus Knox, and I believe it was Slogan, from the remainder of the fight. So there was nobody that was able to enter. So they slammed the door on Maddie, Drew Dozer, and then they chased down for the rest, able to get priority on the Dragon and the second Rift Herald. Fantastic play from the well, side of Full Spectrum. If they are able to get down on the second Rift Herald, I believe it despawns in like 10 seconds. I'm not sure that they well, actually have the damage to take it in time. It oh, now they do. Never mind. Yeah, they're able to get it. It despawns at 55 if uh, it is in combat at any given time. So it was I was about to say, are they going to leave the eye? <laughs> they could leave that. They just leave it there and there's, eh, we don't need it. No, that you need the, the eye, one. Sonny. You need <laughs> the eye. Gotta love the that was some old pirate movie. I don't remember the name of it, but it was absolutely hilarious as a kid. Good to know. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a big fan of, fi or fan of pirates. My apologies, so... Just coughing on some of my drink there as I laugh. I mean, it. have you ever just hopped into a game as either Misfortune or Gangplank and just had you are a pirate blasting in the background the whole time while singing along as you just either kill people with your guns or just blow them up with barrels? It's an absolute blast. Uh, something better, yeah. Especially when people try to do the pirate roleplay. Those are almost my favorite when, when those come through in solo queue. Because people get pissed at the roleplay, so those are my favorites. So. Yeah, and this is smart here by the side of Full Spectrum. They managed to save the HP on Shelly for that second charge. Even if they hit the eye, this charge is going to pop off. It's that's going to be actually engaged by Lutano. That's the knockup onto O'Grave, who takes a chunk there from Eclipse's stealing of the last breath. But there is the bullet time for him. And that was a beautiful Shadow Dash. Catches three. That's one falling already for the side of Full Spectrum. The side of... TFT, though, they are so low. They have to retreat as fast as possible. They lost two in that melee into the one of full spectrum. Yeah, so the initial engagement was really good. I'm going to wait for this fight to actually clean up first. Let's see if anything else comes through. Oh, oh that was so close. Uh, yeah, I think this is starting to wind down a little bit so we can go through the fight. Uh, yeah, so it started off with Eclipse doing a really good job. He had the stolen Gragas ultimate, and that actually split Maddie off from the rest of the fight, which is a good amount of the engage and a fair amount of magic damage that can come through. So that was a good start to the fight. What was important is, as you said, that Shadow Dash from Shen got so many people, but was vital to that engagement was a missed uh, Villas. Villas was in the back the entire time, able to free fire forward into the fight, into anybody that was there. So they were able to switch out their front line twice during that, but they were mm -hmm. still able to get the kill out. I believe it was onto Drew Dozer, all things said and done, uh, because there was enough people there to tank all of that engage, all the upfront damage for V-List to be able to open fire. So that's a really good play setup from the side of Full Spectrum, knowing to protect that carry because he has most of the damage and he's the one you're relying on right now. Yeah. And right now, I really, I was I'm looking at Maddie in that fight and just thinking about how little he was able to stand up to the damage of Full Spectrum. It didn't really seem like his ninja tabs were really doing anything as now that's going to be, speaking of him, oh. he's going to be in the face of Winston and Lutano. Now Vilas going in onto Slogan, but back to those toppies, they just don't seem to be doing anything. I think another boot that gave him more movement speed or maybe the penetration boots would have been better, but he doesn't have any HP right now to make the armor worth anything. 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it doesn't really help him all that much, especially before the lock is finished, because he can't use that Zonius to stall out his fight and then switch out one of those frontliners as best he can. So mm -hmm. uh, he can't just forward engage. You saw what happened last time when he tried to just forward engage. He was able to get punished very heavily from this team. Uh, they won't have the explosive cast next time, so the silo's not going to have that cooldown for him. And yeah, no, Winston in a little bit of trouble. Does pop stopwatch. Looks like the teams are joining the fight. Eclipse manages to barely avoid any sort of crowd control coming out. But now Vilas has to run after eating an entire channel of the bullet time. Yeah, nice little flash from Vilas. That was that was a very strange fight. It kind of seemed like neither one of them wanted to have a full engagement after seeing the entire enemy team there. And so we just saw that fight between Vilas and Ograve, where it, it turned out that Ograve actually had enough damage once the press the attack was through to throw in that ultimate. Thankfully, the flash, of course, from Vilas was able to save him on that one. Uh, not going to have it for the next fight, though. So again, they have to protect him very, very heavily in the next fight to make sure he can put out that damage necessary uh, to make this fight work. Absolutely. Now, with that dragon spawning in the next 15 seconds, it's going to create an interesting situation because neither team really wants the other to get the soul. Even if it is the cloud soul, which uh, is probably the weakest. I, I can't remember if they still kept it with the ultimate cooldown or not off the top of my head because I remember there was a um, little bit of change in, in the cloud soul after the initial broken version. <laughs> yeah, the, the flat stats still remain, but now you get uh, combat uh, just pure movement speed, and then you get uh, movement speed after you throw your ultimate. Let's see this. Oh, oh but awesome. I think right now Winston could use some movement oh. speed, and it looks like he's got some oh. from Matty, but oh. the Ignite is too much as the Cloud Drake does go down to full spectrum in trade for their jungler. And I'm a little bit surprised that there's no call for Baron right now with the jungler down for another 30 seconds. Yeah, especially when you've got an MF and you have a uh, like an Aatrox, you have an MF, and then you also have Yasuo. So you have a ton of consistent damage to work with. They're getting pressure around this Baron area, getting this vision control back. But I think Winston will be up and able to contest it once the time comes. So yeah, they were a little bit slow on the draw there. But as you said, they were on the they were on the dragon. You saw them get the dragon. I would have just beeline directly for the Baron, especially after the pickoff. I thought Winston was getting out. I really did, but well, because they also had out. four members close by, mm -hmm. and yeah. Albus Knox had teleport, whereas Eclipse yeah. did not. Yeah, as, at minimum, if you start up the Baron there, you can pull pressure away from Albus Nox and you can potentially get the wave going towards the bottom side. So then you can pull another member. You can either pull Eclipse, who doesn't have TP, or Sudzy to the bottom side of the map in order to respond to that wave. Then you can get pressure back into the Baron, and the Baron Dance is firmly in your control. But they don't do that, and now they lose all the vision they just put down in that area. So basically everything they just did was nothing. All they got was the pick there, which is not yeah, worth your it. your very worst outcome the there. It's a 4v5 in the Baron pit with you having ultimates and them not <laughs> versus on the flip side, it w you the worst case scenario, I would say the best case scenario would have been a 5v3 where you just have that numbers advantage inherently. That is the case. Actually, it looks like we're gonna start seeing the lane assignment be Albus Knox up against Sudzy, which is gonna be a lot more interesting because I don't think Sudzy can just purely take the pure one-on-one -on -one against Albus Knox like he can against Crudos. Ooh, engagement. The engagement indeed on to Maddie, who bites the dust. That fat man feels a very big grave right now. And now it looks like the side of Full Spectrum are making a beeline to bury the Baron Nasher. No, I'm sorry, it's Paul the Baron Nasher. <laughs> yeah, I saw that little thread with the name on it yesterday. That's pretty interesting the name comes through. They are TPing in Albus Knox, and they have plenty of people here. They do not have the bullet time, importantly. I think that's a very, very important uh, ball for this team fight, though. Yeah, here we go. Albus Knox into the fight, into the face of the entire enemy team. Drew Dozer into the back line, though, does cut down Vilas. That's so much damage out of the Oswo. He's going ham on the backside, and it looks like Sudley will, Sudley will barely be able to escape with his life. Eclipse doesn't look like he's going to be so fortunate. Winston does land the Sonic Wave onto O'Grave. This is key here because right now it is still a 4v3. Lutino needs to get out. Slogan does put down the Spirit's Refuge, gets off a double taunt. That's going to be the shutdown on the Aatrox, though. So overall, that's going to be full spectrum winning the fight, but Maddie is alive, so this is not exactly a safe Baron Nasher quite yet. Nope. Winston takes so much damage off of that explosive cast that now they're pushed off it for just a moment, but they are right back on it. Yeah, so the fight initially went away very heavily to TFT because they were able to get the Lucian off the back end for the Yasuo, which is a more than worthwhile trade. The problem was they split very, very heavily on the 
second half of that fight. So you don't have Gragas the entire time. Albus Knox was effectively pushed out. So then all you had was Ograve trying to auto people to death. He didn't have the ultimate rally available to burst somebody out. And that was the trouble that you had. It's just trying to run through this team with the misfortune was not enough damage at this point in the game. And so everybody else on the side, this, again, this went down to a scrappy fight with no ultimates. And when you get to the scrappy fight with no ultimates, the side of full spectrum is going to win those 100 percent of the time it's that initial engagement that first fight that has to count for the side of um, tft and it didn't right there and that's why they're able to get the baron yeah and this calls back to that lack of baron call earlier <laughs> i really feel like that is a, a decision making process where you you could where you've been playing a little bit passively and you choose to go overly passive and now it could cost you the game as a result the side of full spectrum know that they have the advantage now they have the baron they have the push on the dragon spawns in less than a minute and one more after that would give them the soul and then access to the elder dragon questions would that game last that long we don't know but if they can protect velas this could actually just be game very soon yeah, not to mention, uh, it's starting to get to the point where, uh, of course, right now, I think the Atrex is basically at the pinnacle of his ability to split push and having mm -hmm. the Black Cleaver, the Execution is calling the Death Stance. Um, but the Baron obviously thwarts that. Not to mention, you're going to quickly approach the point where Sudsy can purely take him on in a 1v1 because that's just where Camille gets in a point in the game. And at that point, you also open up the avenue of potentially playing 4-1, where Sudsy is just in a side lane on his own, not having to worry about the team fight, especially in the off time when the objectives are not there. Yeah, and that's, gonna, and that's the bullet time. Actually, for the most part, it was blocked by the wind wall of mm -hmm. Drew Dozer. So this is a very dangerous situation without that Silas ult. And now without the Lucian ult, you pop the culling there in the face of it. That's going to be the oh. flash. That's going to be the engage on to Vilas, who dies instantly. Drew Dozer takes him out without any question. But Maddie dies on the backside. Now that's a silent Drew Dozer who goes golden. This is a hell of a fight right now going down. And it looks like the side of full spectrum are getting demolished they only have two members left in it winston who's barely any health remaining and lutino who just gets knocked up one two that's the bouncing bullets not able to land quite yet winston trying to run away as fast as he can albus Knox does not have flash the question is can the darkened blade land no it cannot so right now that is a massive amount of the baron wasted and a three for two in favor of team fish taco that it is the fight on the top side of the map of course as you were saying the silas ultimate is a big portion of some of the team fight potential that this team has once that's wasted from eclipse now you really really have to focus on not allowing the rest of the fight especially that initial engagement pop off from the side of tft and what happens flash ultimate immediate or by, by flash e immediately onto velas sets up a good yasuo ultimate and a fantastic O'Grave ultimate with this misfortune and because of that the fight was essentially won at that point then Aatrox is your consistent damage through the fight he was completely untouched so he ults in and does more than enough damage to clean up the rest of that so fantastic job the one thing is they only got a cloud drake for it which is a shame they set themselves up for cloud soul they denied the baron which is nice and they show that they are in this game fighting absolutely but they need to make that engagement work without the flash of Maddie. oh Maddie, my no. guy <laughs> He's going to be maddy about that one, isn't he? Oh, that joke was even worse <laughs> than my puns. And that's saying something, mate. Yeah, it was a low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I mean, I get the guy's fat, but you don't have to call him a low-hanging fruit. Oh, no. <laughs> now, that was funny. But you know what isn't funny? Albus Knox getting deleted there by the side of Full Spectrum. This is going to be an inhibitor dropping in favor of the of full spectrum esports now the mid lane inhibitor looks like it's gonna drop too this is two already down the third in their sights and unprotected that's two members dead this looks like the side of full spectrum might have just won the game off of that single just pick i so i can understand after having lost gragas what would have happened there yeah i'm gonna see if this engagement comes through before i keep talking nah, yeah, nothing's gonna happen that one, yeah. so, so they get the pick out of maddie as you were you were detailing I understand not being able to defend both the top and the mid tower. I get that entirely. But they pulled off of both of them and they ended up getting a pick on the Albus Knox and then they just completely gave up on both. And I'm like, you can commit to defending one perfectly fine. You still have Drew Dozer. You still have the MF ultimate. You have more than enough to defend at least one tower here. And you could probably honestly defend a tower and an inhibitor with the tools you had the low timer on Maddie. Ooh, 
Mm -hmm. And now Drew Dozer very low in the face of both Winston and Vilas. He's going to get popped with that Guardian Angel. The question is, will he go down? Yes. yes. Winston is on a killing spree. 6, 2, and 11 on this Lee Sin. Maybe those LEC junglers were right. <laughs> Looks like th this could be the closing fight here. One member dead at a disadvantage. Team Fish Taco, their backs are against the wall. They've got to give it their all. This is their final stand, and the choice to win or lose is in their hand. Or maybe Winston just decides to take it from him as he gets the kick onto Slogan into the backside. That's going to be the bullet time, cutting them down, but it is the damage on the Nexus. It will be enough, I think, in just a moment. Eclipse takes down Maddie. Looks like Albus Knox going to drop here in just a moment to Vilas, and that's going to be the game in favor of full spectrum yeah uh that engagement at the end of course uh, i actually didn't mind the attempt from drew dozer he had plenty of uh, room to work with the problem was nobody on his team could follow up for one thing and the second thing was missing that tornado completely lost from the pure 1v1 he could have beaten velas if he hits that tornado awesome and then burns the stopwatch because then he could work his way back up the wave that was pushing up in his favor and continue out the back with the rest of his team following up but unfortunately uh that stopwatch stalls before the tornado hits and there's nothing that can come through on the backside. and once that yasuo is gone you lose a very significant amount of not only your damage but your CC specifically to set up that O-Grave ultimate. And so they just ended up collapsing due to the pressure left at the end. I got to ask about that questionable Winston uh, kick onto Slogan 1 because it basically did nothing and only killed him, but uh, certainly walking away from Nah, the it, it wasn't Lee Syndrome at all, man. It was a, <laughs> it was a big brain kick. Big brain. You know, it was a kick of a of a master martial artist who's trained for decades using his mind and body to perfect the perfect of kicks. Perfectly fair. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it was good. It was a great game across the board for the most part. Eclipse did kind of struggle. I would like to see him not play maybe mm -hmm. the Silas this game. Uh, but yeah, it, apart from that, they played the composition perfectly. It's a difficult to play composition and they executed it to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was fantastic to see. Villas, I mean, he did great in these fights. That's, yeah. that's all I can say about Full Spectrum. And one thing that's very impressive for me is the amount of damage uh, taken by champions for, uh, uh, say, for Winston. But he still ended up being, in my opinion, the best performer in the match. It, I mean, his kicks were carrying team fights other than that last one. Uh, he was creating so much pressure around the map. He was making it to where, even while behind, Eclipse never truly got blasted. Yeah, Winston, it was, I, I think, the deterrent in team fights. So the big thing is, like, if Drew Dozer and Mazzy, Maddie get a really good engagement, if Slogan gets a really good taunt into the team, the only disengage that this entire squad on the side of Full Spectrum has is Winston's kick. And that and Lutana, obviously. But the setup for most of them was the Winston kick, and he did a great job of positioning himself to deny at least what should have turned into, like, a five-person immediate win turn into like a three for one fight, which is cutting mm -hmm. those losses as best you can as Winston was the perfect way of playing this. It, it, it's more of like a uh, like a cleanup or kind of a defender lease in than it is this aggressive lease in that we've seen so many people play. I love the adaption. Of it. Yeah, the adaptation was immaculate. But guys, we're going to take a short break. We will be right back with game two of Team Fish Taco versus Full Spectrum. We'll see you then.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hypertension, and we are back here for the Upsearch Premier League. If you were watching the other team, thank you for coming back to us. It is game two of Full Spectrum versus Team Fish Taco. Once again, I am Hypertension, joined by the Rebel Fox, and after that game one, I'm excited. This it looks like a series that could be a full three games, which would actually be the first for this division. Yeah, it would be interesting. TFT certainly brought out plenty of team fighting mechanics, and they showed just how proficient they are in that kind of a setting. I think the one thing they really need to do is is they can clean up a little bit of kind of the rotations that they made. Because again, a couple of times they lost a severe amount of momentum in the game just by being out rotated. Especially to me, the defining moment was that Rift Hero play in the top lane where they got top tower, top inner, and then a large crack on the top lane inhibitor tower for basically just the one kill on the bottom side of the map and then the one tower response eventually. But that is just not worth it. And so once those plays come through, it's hard to come back into the game with that kind of a gold swing. And uh, even a team fight composition, I wouldn't mind them going back to something like that, going back to the Asso of Gragas because it works so well. For them. Absolutely. And we'll have to see how that does develop out with the draft being up in just a moment. We will see what happens. Uh, is there any bans from last game that you think, uh, or any picks from last game that you think should hit the ban list now? Oh, that's a rough one. Okay, so there was nothing that really popped off in any case in my mind that could be replaced Lee Sin. by something else. Yeah, the Lee Sin was super good from Winston. Although, again, with TFT on the blue side, I wouldn't see them ban that. I would see them actually pick that. It's a really high priority pick in the first place, and I know that Maddie likes to play himself, so I'm take that mm -hmm. away, and then you don't have to worry about it. But uh, it's certainly something to watch for. If they aren't willing to take it first, then ban it. Absolutely, 100%. They're also terrified of this Lucian. Uh, not willing to let that through. They also banned the set on blue side, which means they're not willing to pick it first. Of course, it did take some of those nerfs, but I wouldn't expect it to be something that they just can't first pick if they want to, especially because mm -hmm. it's flexible, but not the case here. Yeah, as we do see that the Lucian, the set, the Lee Sin, Thresh, and Aphelios are the first five bands, followed by the Olaf as the final band of the first rotation for full spectrum. Yes, it is now locked in. This means that that first pick will be a Syndra. For Team Fish yeah. Taco. 
flexible between the mid and the bottom lane. I, I, I consider Cinder to be the, the most average mage right now, which is why I, I'm always curious when people like the want most to get average the, mage. The most what a high like, praise for my co-caster. <laughs> it's it's a it's something you can play in the meta. It's good to play in the meta. It does a lot of good things, but there's nothing special about the champion other what than that it to rise. I don't know. Rise, I love. I think Rise is great. He's perfectly acceptable. But the reason Cinder is so good is just because it does flex very well between a, like mid and AD. And I think that's the main reason why, especially taking it first overall, that's really the only reason you'd do it. I'm not as big of a fan of the APC Syndra myself. I feel like, yeah. especially with the power of AD carries at the moment, uh, particularly, you know, the big ones being the Zaya, mm -hmm. the Aphelios, the Senna, uh, things like that, and how well they can pair with uh, these tanks that are mm -hmm. starting to pop up in the top lane and these very tanky engaged supports, I tend to prefer those because right now also we have an Orn and I don't know about right. you, but Molten Edge is a pretty fun item. It's rather strong. <laughs> I'll say that to say the least. If you're an ADC, you love to build that item. Uh, those crit latest ADCs love that more than anything. We saw the Xyricon on that side. Elise is also taken. I love Elise right now. Mm -hmm. um i like i like i prioritize her higher than most other people that play jungle probably people that are better than me but the elise is one of my favorite champions to play that is actually jarvin so that's unfortunate because i do know winston is a good elise player but they're opting for the team fight setup with the jarvin instead so they have to disappoint me as best as possible they have to disappoint not only you but they have to disappoint me because uh -huh. come on guys you're upl i expect pro draft mistakes out of you jail come on guys <laughs> why are you breaking my heart <laughs> Wait, who, who was it? It was Full Spectrum that did it. So that coach is ADFX. I blame you. Yeah. ADFX is blamed. Of course, now, in fairness, Pro Draft is very unforgiving. Literally, it, it's a pure 30 second timer. There is absolutely no leeway on it. If you get to that timer, you're done. You don't get to pick the but champion. That's how it it's should surprising. be. Agreed. But it happens from time to time. I mean, a little bit of wiggle room, especially to change in the last second just to make sure it's something. Kindred and the Rek'Sai actually banned away from Maddie in this one. I'm surprised to see the Kindred banned away. Um, Lee Sin and Olaf are both taken off the board. So I would, I, I'll save that for a minute. But Yasuo taken off the board from the side of TFT. They want to prevent any sort of engagement. And Silas also banned away. Yeah, banned away indeed. And it looks as if uh, they were afraid of the Silas. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, it did good things in the later stages. And again, it's not a weak champion. I was just really curious about why they put it in the Aatrox lane. And it lost early, and there's not much you can do. And then again, it didn't get anything in skirmishes early on either. So uh -huh. there was no favors done to the Silas, which is the problem. FS, uh, again, I would expect this to be top lane because they can respond to it with the orb. Okay, this is what I was going to allude to because they, I thought they were going to save this for later. The Echo can be flexed between both mid and jungle. They already have the J4, so it's likely to be the mid laner. I'm surprised about that, though. So I'm curious if they're willing to flex Jarvan top lane because it's certainly something we've seen in the past. It's not I... terrible into the Orn either. I don't think so, but FS does play the Echo, um, or at least there's just a takeaway from Maddie here. Yeah, I personally I would, would prefer to see the Echo in the mid lane against the Syndra because yeah. that is the go-to counter. You know, it's like, that's what people say. It's like, oh, that's pick Syndra. Echo into Syndra. Now that... That's a Syndra AD. Now, okay, Jin Zhao, this is, again, Maddie likes to play some of these dueling champions. Jin Zhao is like his second most played alongside the Olaf. So when Olaf's taken away, he goes Jin Zhao, which is not pure meta right now. It's certainly not up there on the tier list, but it's something that duels the Echo really well. It does provide a lot of engage. I want to see... And like it, got, it has to be an AD champion. I'd rather see the Cinder bot lane right now with the Echo mid. Yeah, it, that's not looking like it's going to be the case. As we get the vein, we are vein spotting here on Summoner's Rift, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh man. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to see what this pick is from FS, but bear with me really quick. If she is a something... word that I cannot say on stream. If you're wondering what I'm thinking, I'm thinking of that Elton John song. He's up, he's up, and up, he's back. I had to Something. censor myself there, ladies and gentlemen. Perfectly fair. We need to get a censor button for the stream. We'll wait for FS to pick this. Okay, it's gonna be Mordekaiser top. Okay, so bear with me. Imagine this. They throw Orn mid, put Cinder bot, put Vayne top. No. That's no. hard get out of my stream. And also, that Mordekaiser is a happen. Cassiopeia, so it turns out oh. that it, it does look like... I think that's a Cassiopeia <laughs> top. It could be cast top. It could be pretty much a it, two draft mistakes is unforgivable. So unfortunately, full spectrum is going to be kicked out of our league now. 
Sorry, guys. No refunds. No, guys. No, come on. I guys. have more come faith on. in you than that. <laughs> I mean, you did it on the last pick, so I can very quickly and easily fix it, as you see on the stream, with my immaculately made transition, which looks gorgeous, by the way. Um, but now, <laughs> we do see that it is probably a Cassiopeia top into the Orn. That's going to give her a massive advantage, not only due to the range, but due to the consistent DPS that can actually work through his tank stats. We see the Jarvan into the uh, Zheng Zhao. We see Syndra into Echo. And then Zyra Khan versus Vayne Leona. Yeah, interesting matchups pretty much across the board. Um, I don't even know where to dive into a composition like this just because of the way it's set up. Like I said, we've talked about Echo Syndra. Echo Syndra is uh, not a terrible matchup between the two of them. Echo likes that matchup just because he can't get burst out by the ultimate. Of course, he does get disengaged pretty hard by the Syndra E. So, like, a good Syndra mm -hmm. can do, like, damage heavily to an Echo's team fighting potential. The laning potential is better for Echo because he can push pretty hard, roams a little bit harder because he can uh, he has, has that mobility built into his kit. But then in team fights, you can deny quite a bit from this Echo with the Syndra. There's a lot of ways you can do something like that. So hopefully if you can get through the laning phase as Drew Dozer, he will feel more impactful against this Echo later. Mm -hmm. And right now, one thing I would like to point out is while we do see, uh, you said Echo versus Syndra, that mm -hmm. matchup, the and we talked about Cassiopeia versus Orn in terms of counters. What about Jing Zhao versus Jarvan? Normally, that's a bad matchup for Jing Zhao because even if he does hit the Crescent Guard on someone inside uh, the um, I say inside the Cataclysm, I'm pretty sure they're only knocked back to the wall. I'm pretty sure it's not a <laughs> wall covering uh, knockback. That's correct. I do want to point out um, most of the damage coming through. You've got Cassiopeia, you've got Echo, who like he can obviously dive in on the Xin Zhao, and you've got Zaya. But the majority of the damage you're going to be putting out in this game is going to be ranged. Xin Zhao, as long as as long as like the Cassiopeia and the Zaya aren't locked into Cataclysm with him, using that ultimate actually gives him a buffer zone around him to keep them further out so they can't get into the circle. So there's that potential interaction too. So there's the interaction of oh, if somebody's stuck in there that can kill him, like the Echo or the Jarvan. That's going to be rough. But the people that can kill him from far away actually have even less ability to get into his circle to fight him too. Now, in the Jarvan matchup, I don't think it's particularly good. Jarvan feels like the best jungler in the game in pretty much everywhere. He and Lee Sin are just absolute top two picks, guaranteed. And Jarvan's team fight is just too good. His flexibility on his runes, flexibility in his build path, there's just so much a Jarvan can do right now. I don't know that even a good Jin Zhao is going to be able to counteract what the Jarvan can provide for it. Yeah, and that's a very good way to look at it now we talked about jungle we've talked about mid we've talked about top lane bottom lane we <laughs> have a freaking bane that's correct we now, have budget I... kaisa but with a much edgier personality and no likable traits in the lore that's no likable traits in the lore okay no All right, seriously that's... in the lore bane is one of the most unrelatable unlikable champions she freaking <laughs> kills her adoptive mom who's been proven her whole life to be a great person taught Vayne everything she knew about monster hunting she revealed that she had some curse put on her that made her a monster occasionally Vayne instantly without even hearing her out put a bolt through her adopted mother's throat that is you how cold this woman is you're the lore master, so I'm going to divulge this one to you so I will see that Vayne is a terrible, horrible person. And obviously, everybody hates Vayne just in the game. I, honestly, nobody likes to play against Vayne. She is very fun to play, though. In this composition, the way she works in a couple of different ways. Number one, Vayne versus Jarvan feels terrible for Jarvan because if you try to Cataclysm and she uses her E ahead of time, you get insta-stunned and you can actually cancel the damage, which just sucks. Because then you get no damage and you're stunned in a box with a Vayne, which is just unworkable. You can deny Rakan's Engage with that mm -hmm. uh, Condemn as well. That's a really good way to try to prevent him from getting in on that initial ultimate in W. So that's a really good way to work too. Um, and it works very well, especially in front to back team fights where you've got Echo diving, you've got Jarvan diving, and then the next line is Rakan will be there alongside the Zaya and the Cassiopeia. So if you can work your way through the Jarvan, through the Echo, or at least force the Echo to ultimate, you can continue through the fight like that. And you have the Jun Zhao, the Orn, the Leona for frontline. You got more than enough there to work with. Yeah, and overall, the CC that can come out from t from full spectrum is absolutely immaculate. But on the flip side, TFT are no slouch there either. Guys, we are running short on time. So before we head into game two, which could be the final game of the series, it could not be. We will give you another shout out from our friends over at Midwest 
Esports. Midwest Esports it has been around for many a year, starting as a small student group out of Wichita State University. Since then, they have grown to be a veteran organizer to tournaments and events throughout the U.S. They host tournaments for games like League of Legends, also known as Upsurge, Rocket League, as well as Overwatch. For more information, check them out at MidwestEsports.com. And with that in out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. It is time for a short break, but then we go to game two between Full Spectrum and Team Fish Taco. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, here on to Summoner's Rift for Game 2 of the day between Team Fish Taco and Full Spectrum. Once again, I am Hypertension, joined by Rebel Fox. You know the players, you know who we are. Let's get on to Summoner's Rift as both teams start up with the line of scrimmage. That they do. Thankfully, both teams just going to a pure five point. Um, I mean, you have CC and you have damage on both sides, so I'm just happy that neither one of them wants to take the high variance play here and just play a little bit more safe. I want to look really quickly. I'm just going to highlight this one like rune choice. We actually had some super lag. It was immediate unpause. That is crazy. The timing that just worked out. But okay, so Albus Knox actually works the grasp into his keystone. Typically, you see unsealed spellbook for a number of reasons. Is because it does provide a lot of defense in terms of your summers, gives them faster cooldowns, lets him teleport a little bit more often to BNT fights. In this matchup, I'm not sure I agree with the Grassy then dying, because I think it's difficult to get onto the Cassiopeia. This is one of the few champions that not only, like, if she hits you with a Q, she can speed away, so it doesn't matter even if you're able to EA it. So you have to hit most of your combo just to get a Grass proc onto the range champion. So I think it's a difficult one to manage. I'm not saying it's necessarily a terrible choice. There's plenty of trading potential for the Orn in every matchup. Uh -huh. But it's a difficult one, mostly, especially when you have the Cassiopeia on the opposite side of you. So I don't know that this was the most yeah. optimal choice. Albus yeah, Knox. Uh, when you do have that Orn, he is very powerful into melee matchups. But mm -hmm. as soon as you have those ranged matchups that can sort of abuse him before he gets his dash, he can fall behind. But there's always that kill pressure unless, unless <laughs> the Miasma comes out to negate yeah. the Searing Charge. Yeah, and now I also have another question. The Searing Charge he had denied from the Miasma, does his ult dash get canceled too because I, I don't think it does ever seen that yes it does interact. Ooh. okay so that the could be the only thing very... that is not blocked by grounded is his uh e being the bellows breath because it yeah. is technically unstoppable and it's not coded as a dash or move or a, uh, or a blink anyway but any movement ability that does not carry unstoppable is uh, is 
inactive and unable to be cast during a ground effect. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this Cassiopeia has more than enough agency to be able to handle whatever it is the Orn is bringing in this top lane. So, uh, it, to me, that means that Maddie has to put a little more attention towards this top side because Eclipse last game on the Silas really didn't have a very good matchup. In mm -hmm. this game, he has a much better matchup. So, Maddie needs to put a little more attention here to make sure that his top laner doesn't just fall by the wayside early on. Absolutely. You have to make sure that Alvis doesn't fall behind or else that Orn, he's going to be some dead weight. And all he'll be good for is getting <laughs> items for the rest of the team. That is the case. Actually, I, I'll, I want to highlight another room choice here because I noticed it on Dree Dozer, which isn't anything shocking, but it's the phase rush. Importantly, uh, again, it, even with an electrocute proc, uh, unless you get it a very, very early solo kill onto Sudzy, which isn't likely to happen because of Sudzy's skill, mm -hmm. then... I mean, if you're looking for burst, you're going to get a lot of burst with that initial attack onto an Echo, but when he ults, that's going to be gone anyway. So the important part of this is that taking the phase rush allows him to get disengaged from the Echo and from Winston when they try to come in, and it allows him to team fight a little bit better. So I love that rune choice as a cute post to Electrocute, which is something you do see on Syndra every once in a while. Yeah, as you said, the phase rush is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And I, and I completely agree with you there. I think that the safety it provides, especially into a matchup that can go either way, like the Echo, will be much more beneficial in the long run, particularly when they have such closing speed, because guess what? Uh, oh, wait, never mind. Winston in a lot of trouble. First blood over to Maddie. Oof. You see, when someone finds you in their house, it's late at night, they're within their rights to shove a spear in your face. And Winston just learned that firsthand. That's perfectly fair, I suppose. Um, I do have a question. Okay, so obviously this is a style of play that really, really is good for uh, the Xinxiao. He does it really, really well, and it's something that Maddie likes to play often. So I I'm not surprised that he opts for something like this. My biggest question, though, is I see Jarvins all the time take Skirmisher Saber because they want to gank early. Then they don't gank early. So what's the point of taking Skirmisher Saber? If you take Hunter's Talisman, you have a much healthier clear. It's a lot better to counter gank with it, especially in an aggressive matchup like Maddie opted for here. It would have been better to take the Hunter's Talisman, have that health, and you might have been able to get away in the sense. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he did not choose to do that, and he paid for it with his life. That he did. Pretty rough to... Uh to have that one come through now. He's kind of sitting around this ball. I don't know if they see him. He seemed like he was maybe around the corner, but it uh, doesn't look like there was any reaction there. So. Yeah. So one notable buy I would like to point out here, he's going to be the ring and dark seal purchase by mm -hmm. Sudzy. That means that he's going to be trying to go for a lot of kills in this early game and a lot more pressure there. But in the bottom lane, speaking of going for kills, Ograve is in a little bit of trouble. That is going to be the feathers flying, but no blade caller Ooh. able to come out at the moment. That means that everybody's just going to get away. No summoners or anything burned. Yeah, trade on the back end of the fight actually felt pretty nice because Ograve was able to take uh, probably another 100 or 200 health off of Velas there uh, that otherwise would have happened. Now, the health pot's going to at least get some of that back, which does feel bad for Ograve, but at least he does burn that one little bit of summoner. A little bit of trade back, not too bad there. Yeah, that little bit of trade back can mean the world when it comes later. You never know when an Ignite will take down and that 100 health ends up being what saves your life. Because both does. these it... have Ignite. <laughs> you always take ignite exhaust just uh feels bad actually you're getting piece, exhaust. Cast, i thankfully. missed exhaust i miss exhaust so much as a summoner spell it's actually such like a big brain summoner spell yeah but right now it's just like the no brain that is ignite <laughs> takes over Free because damage. it does too much it's like brawn over brains in that situation just like how right now eclipse is getting engaged on by alvis Knox. here comes the call of the forge god actually he used the miasma already oh. i think that's a flash by both but eclipse bites the dust looks like orange next project is a pair of sk snake skin boots <laughs> oh my good alvis Knox has been playing so well in the individual 1v1 lane you saw it right there he can like okay eclipse made it very very obvious he was going to turn an ultimate right there to try to deny the ultimate coming through from albus Knox. but my lord the turn from albus Knox and the immediate ultimate afterwards to be able to confirm that kill burning the flash off eclipse too again he didn't really have poke damage either that was like a hundred to zero for the most part onto eclipse from the orn you have to think if orn is actually classified as an assassin at this point or not uh, I'm just not sure, but yeah, certainly doing that much damage feels really nice. I don't even know if he got the grass proc off during that phase. I think it went too quickly for him. I think he actually, actually did the get end. the grass proc off uh, because of the final auto attack. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, but th yeah, the, the start of that fight, he didn't have the grasp ready to go. He was out of combat, and it was a relatively full health Cassiopeia, and you saw the damage he can output when he gets the full combo off. Well, I was saying the very last uh, bit of damage was a flash auto attack, so I think that yeah. off of that, he got it. The, yeah, that's 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 the case. I, I would assume it, if he got it at any point, it was definitely during that, because it definitely wasn't during the beginning of the fight, that's for sure. Yeah. And now look at the bottom lane for the side of Full Spectrum in a little bit of trouble, but it looks like that neither Maddie nor Drew Dozer will get any of the fish that they were trying to catch. No, they do have priority on this river very heavily, and Winston's on the top side of the map, so they don't have any ability to contest for this dragon. So um, Maddie with this Zin Zhao pick should feel perfectly comfortable, even just soloing it, but uh, in this case has Drew Dozer there with him. He's able to push him out. Yeah, just just a little bit of assistance to make sure that they didn't have to worry about any sort of collapse coming through. Um, and it surprisingly they're able to get such easy comfort on this bottom side river with the vein and the Leona lane into the Rosaya Rakan. Uh, they're pushing pretty consistently. Nothing. They are, and now it does look like uh, with that Mountain Drake, it will be the Ocean Drake spawning next. So that means either the all important Infernal Soul or the Lackluster Cloud Soul. The <laughs> Lackluster Cloud Soul. I mean, to, let, let's be honest. When they removed the ultimate cooldown, Cloud Soul became the, the weakest one. But right now, it is Vilas who is weak on HP. He's ticking down to the Ignite. Those, those silver bolts will seal his doom. Oh, Grave dies after he gets knocked up under tower as well. One for one. But once again, both actually this time, both supports got the kills. Yeah, able to confirm that one. It was really aggressive from the side of TFT to go for that one. Now, actually, we see a gank in the top lane as well. Gank in the top lane. Winston, though, managed to block the Call of the Forge God dash there with his own dash. Looks like Winston's probably going to die to Maddie for oh. his efforts. And look at that. The Crescent Guard was not <laughs> enough there. I would say it allowed him to, t to block a lot of the damage. But now Eclipse is the one in a lot of trouble. Maddie, one more. Fang will do it, but he doesn't get it down in time. That is basically a double kill for Matty, but here comes Sudzy. One auto attack. Overall, a 2 for 2 but Drew Dozer here as well. Is everyone going to fight here? Here comes freaking Ograve. That's yet another person in the top lane. Sudzy probably going to die. One more silver bolt. No, it's going to be the auto attack from Drew Dozer. Overall, that is a 3 for 2 Why is everyone top? <laughs> uh, you always ask yourself that when you're playing top lane and so if you somehow everybody ends up there and your team always loses in this case it was it was a good gank side and a good response there also for maddie to try to get the return kill as i said that crescent strike in the middle of the um the um my apologies the uh i can't think what it's called the cataclysm that's what it is was able to defend against some of the damage up front from eclipse and then he wasn't Dragon able wall. to get it enough to continue uh so he was able to get that trade i mean literally those two fangs that would have come through from eclipse would have been more than enough to kill maddie all things said and done but then sudsy comes in gets it but then the response from drew dozer and of course oh grave because of the rotation up for the rift herald surprisingly they were already planning on doing that and they get the forward progress here so now they've doubled the number of kills the gold is relatively even but they're going to get quite a bit here from just having the rift herald in their dubs now albus knox in a terrible place at the moment yeah, Albus Knox, my man, 3v1 under tower. That's actually a lot of oh. tower damage going down onto Winston, but it is Vilas who gets the kill. They probably won't be able to repeat this onto Sunzi. Actually, they lock him down perfectly, but the stun coming in. Maddie's the one who dies. Sunzi survives, at least for now, and it's going to get a double kill. No! Oh, wait, is he in tower oh. range, though? <laughs> oh, my God, what a stopwatch. That was astonishing. And again, one more step back, one more step forward. He's maybe in tower range and dies there. That was pretty pretty precise positioning there from Ograve to be able to get out of that situation alive phenomenal from him thankfully also they weren't able to utilize that rift herald into any of the lanes effectively to get a cower kill so this is actually a so it's a one for one all things said and done but the tower now and all that plating goes on to this zaya which is a phenomenal thing for the side of War. Yeah, looking at the gold difference right now, that vein is sitting at 3,800. That's a 4,700 gold vilest on that Zaya. Looking around across the rest of the map, there's actually gold leads in every single roll except for jungle for the side of full spectrum, despite the deceptive kill lead. Yeah. It, it's important always to track uh, CS's long side that and, and you do see Vilas has quite a bit more than his opposition You have Sudzy who's right there with his opposition and has more kills than you would see on that Drew Dozer uh, Winston been in more lanes been doing uh, pretty decent work as well So keeping up with his opposition as well, and of course Cassiopeia uh, Obviously, I, I have no idea I, Sometimes it comes down to the variance of the minions you actually are able to consume and get in your CS score As opposed to just purely counting the number of minions you're able to get and so sometimes that equates into it Which I guess is what happened in this particular case yeah and now 
looking at the ocean that? drake is less than a minute from spawning away eclipse is in the bottom lane is actually running oh. from o grave this is not a situation you want to be in as the cassiopeia not down 11 cs against the person you're in lane with down uh i would say up a level but not able to put a kill pressure down. Instead, they're leaving the kills to the top lane. That's an unstoppable Orn, but he is very stoppable when it comes to getting killed as he gives to Vilas once again. Yeah, they actually pulled. Oh, exactly now Eclipse is in a lot of way. trouble. Oh, That's going to be a flash oh. burn from him after he gets a perfect petrifying gaze. And this should be yet another tower for full spectrum. Yeah, and I saw the Rift Herald went down somewhere, but I didn't see where it got dropped at. Was it dropped in the yeah, bottom Yeah, I have lane? no idea, but it looks like Drew Dozer could be in a lot of trouble. Eclipse trying to deal out. Twin Fangs actually doing so much more than the Silver Bolts at the moment. Eclipse dies to Matty. Yeah, nice little dive onto that bottom lane. Because, uh, the, the ultimate in the flash were burnt from Cassiopeia, so I'm surprised Eclipse actually stuck around to contest for this. Uh, yeah, I, again, though, I, I'm lost. We, I heard the Rift Herald go down, didn't we? We did hear it go down. It wasn't canceled. So what I'm happened? Not sure. Oh, that is going to be the quickness burned, and all it took was one scatter the meek. Yeah, nice little play there. Able to get that. Drew Dozer say, Drew Dozer is basically looking at that, you know, that muscular bird man, and just be like, "Be gone, thought." <laughs> just kicking him out as best he can. Not able to do anything. You gotta yeah, kick get... out the bird man. Yeah. Only droppings yeah, all over the floor. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, geez, uh, indeed, is now it will unfortunately be that less than important Cloud Soul. Uh, that's unfortunate. We do see that in terrible positioning. Uh, I actually went back and I wanted to look and see what happened to the Rift Herald. They use it in the mid lane and Cinder was able to pick up a couple of those plates. But outside of that, I mean, you just see that's the, that's why all the plates are currently off that mid tower. I was able to find that, thankfully. Uh, just I, w I was really curious about that. So uh, that that's where that went for anybody who wasn't able to pay attention like your casters, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sorry, you, you cut out for me. What did you say went where? Oh, the Rift Herald. Uh, when it was dropped, it went into the mid lane because it was, it was okay. well off camera. It was in the mid lane when they were taking that fight on the bottom side and on the top side. So it jumped between top and bot and completely missed that two, three plates went mid lane to the Syndra. And that's why Drew Dozer has a little bit more gold now in his pocket. But it's just that GLP too. I really like that buy. It's one of my yeah. favorites. And thank you for the repeat, repeat there, my friend. Um, yeah, my uh, headset accidentally unplugged itself. <laughs> so, well, the stream per heard you perfectly fine, I could not. That's fair. The sentient headphones decided to make sure that they would deafen themselves for me. Well, it's more like my my headphones have this, like, little knob in the middle, and it just, like, fell off my desk when I, like, barely turned my head. So, when it did that, it unplugged the thing that connects my headphones to the knob, which connects, I uh, say, which is connected to the computer, so I couldn't hear you because my headset was effectively unplugged. <laughs> gotcha. Vision control here. NA production, ladies and gentlemen. Our graphics look great, but sometimes we have technological snafus. And teams who can't figure out how to draft, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that because uh, this is the that was the fourth pick in like two days where that's happened to me. Fair. Ooh. We are going to get something in the top lane. The quickness and the grand entrance. Drew Dozer is a dead man. Absolutely. And again, you saw the interaction with that uh, shove, the E from the Syndra being able to deny sides of the engagement, but he can't do it twice. And as you said, if you don't kick out that bird man, he's going to leave droppings in your nest. And I can show you, he got a lot of droppings in his nest after that ultimate. Well, in the w instead, he's just going to drop all over your laner. <laughs> if you can't tell, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about bird crap. Like right now, it looks like that was actually a not so oh. crap fight there by Albus Knox. He is surviving so long. He's not going to be able to get out because of the Cataclysm, but beyond that he took a lot of time to die as now Vilas... Oh my god! The, was that a Captain Jack? I that was a Captain was. Jack, but he'll still die for his efforts. Oh, that was beautiful! But now the turn comes out from the side of Full Spectrum. The Crescent Guard goes down. Lutino goes in onto Maddie, who turns back onto Eclipse, but the damage is there. Double kill for the Cassiopeia. Yeah, we, we saw, in my opinion, we just saw two insanely technical plays from Albus Knox and then Velas in a row that still led to their death, unfortunately. Albus Knox able to cancel a couple well, of the CCs. Here we go. Sudsy does manage to reset time, fix his mistake, and not die. Got to appreciate the Echo Ultimate, not letting him die ever. Ooh, yeah, but hit. unfortunately, it won't save him twice. Drew Dozer does get him with the Unleashed Power, but Drew Dozer has to flash to survive his own uh, demons. And that demon, once again, is the bird drop-in man, Lutano. 
Rakan making it uh, life difficult. Of course, the combination of the Rakan and the Echo is going to make pretty much the, the Syndra's life very, very difficult through most of the game, unfortunately, and that's a shame. Uh, again, everybody dropping in a lot of these fights, you're seeing very, very good disengages, very, very good use of tools to try to deny these plays, but the more you use, the more you lost for the next one. So unfortunately, you saw like the Flash, the Cleanse, and the Ultimate came out from Zaya, and it wasn't enough to deny the kill from O'Grave. So not a big that yeah. one. And then response, right? Uh, just responses back and forth. But again, it is actually full spectrum that consistently gets the advantage because they're always getting something on the map. They're always getting more. They're getting minion waves. They're controlling it better. They're getting towers. They're getting dragon. They're, they're trying to get uh, some of these neutral objectives to put themselves in a better position. And now they have a 5,000 gold lead, even though the kills are, they're, they're up one kill. They're up four towers right now. That is an insane amount of gold to have at this point in the game. Yeah. And I'm very impressed by the macro play of Full Spectrum. I can see that like there's still some mechanical, some micro uh, that needs to be handled on this team, but that's to be expected with a team that was just formed a few weeks ago. Uh, their macro play, though, I'm very impressed by the fact that they are constantly getting something no matter what they're losing in almost every situation. It is very impressive overall. And on the flip side, Team Fish Taco are great at not falling completely out of the game. That's actually going to be a massive engage from Winston, oh. who massively might have just face planted into the face of four members. Drew Dozer's going to die on the back line. Ograve gets knocked up, but Winston, how is that man still alive? He's got barely any HP left. Since he's trying to get out of dodge, Lutano is trying to get out of dodge. Everybody's leaving. Winston got out alive somehow, some way. That man is unkillable. Mm -hmm. The case, the tanky Jarvan with the Gargoyle Stone Plate able to enhance his health pretty high there. Now they're going to have priority on this dragon, unfortunately. As you said, it is the Cloud Drake, which is the most impactful to start with, but certainly a good way towards that soul. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that fight, it, it continues to baffle me just how easy it is for them to get onto Drew Dozer with all of these champions, and there's just no defense for him outside of that one push with the E. Um, like I said, Orn might need to start just trying to help peel for the center yeah. because at this point and you're losing so much damage. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Orn uh -huh. can't build his own items until level 13. Is that correct? I believe that's it's either 13 or 12. It's one of the two. I know he can build at least one at 13. So we'll say that. Yeah, in case. I'm just pretty sure it's like that he can't build it because I saw the abyssal mass, but he hasn't done anything with it yet. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's because he is, hasn't hit the level threshold. So that's I correct. believe it's like level 12, level 13, one of the two. Something along those lines. Knock up lands onto Eclipse. <laughs> Where did his health go? <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Again, it's it's an assassin orn. I think there's plenty of damage thrown in from the Cinder as well, but Sudsy actually getting quite a bit on the opposite side of the map. So despite the fact that they lost the Rift Herald, how we get more Velas has to ult once again. It has to ult, has to cleanse again. It wasn't quite a qu Captain Jack, it was a, it was a more anticip It was an anticipation cleanse. I'm not gonna try and say that word that Antip is like past sorry. tense of anticipate. Or like anticipate. relating to anticipate. Yeah, something something along those lines. Yep, See, Winston now. and Lutano are just hanging around at the top side of this fight. They want to look for the flank, but actually, it's Winston has very low health. He does have gargoyles, but I don't know if that helps him too much. Doesn't quite that much. That's going to be the quickness and the grand entrance. There's actually a huge play there. He's inside the Crescent Guard. So much damage from the Zaya. Double kill for Vilas. One for Sudzi. Three for zero in favor of Full Spectrum. And now the Baron is up. This could be the quickest Baron that we've seen thus far on an upsurge stream. It's 20 minutes and not even 45 seconds at the moment. They have all five members there. There's still 14 seconds on each of the members of Team Fish Taco. Will they try and fight this? That Orn is there. He has the call of the Forge God. It's taking yeah, down, so let's see. Right. I don't think Drew Dozer has committed to this, though, so just to try to steal. Not, the and that is going to actually be the Baron going down for the side of Full Spectrum. But Drew Dozer backed off. Albus Knox threw out the ultimate to see if he could get some sort of miracle steal. But, you know, I don't believe in miracles. Perfectly fair. Uh, understandable. Uh, it, 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 anything that it, it can be considered a miracle can also just be considered a phenomenal play. So if you were to steal that with the ultimate, that's what it would have been and not a miracle in that case. But um, I think it's important to highlight kind of where this game has gone in terms of team fighting because right now... The side of Team Fish Tacos have a lot of ability to win fights. Specifically, Ograve right now on the vein is surprisingly powerful and surprisingly potent in terms of pure one-on-ones. And so this team needs to kind of develop that form. They don't need the pure five-on-five -five team fight where you have this big AOE burst. You have a lot of CC across all members. You need to break the fight into multiple components across an entire lane or across in the jungle. That way you have Vayne who can work through multiple opponents 
in separate pieces rather than having to focus on everybody at once. And the exact opposite is true for the side of Full Spectre. You want the full team fight. You want the full five on five. You want everybody to be clustered together. You want to be able to apply the CC that the Jarvan and the uh, Rakan can apply and just let your two carries, the Zaya and this Cassiopeia, do this AoE damage and just destroy. And you saw that. That's why they were able to see the Baron um, as opposed to just the one tower coming through from the side of Deepish Tigers. Yeah, instead of just the tower, they managed to pick up Paul. For those of you that don't know, Paul is, I say his full name is Baron, Baron Paul Nasher. <laughs> that way you also have Paul's power when you have that Baron buff. But now that is a re-engage by the side of Team Fish Taco. That Vayne is just wailing away so much damage from that AD carry, but that's going to be the root landing. And now O'Grave gets cut down by Vilas. It looks like the Featherhead was just powerful enough to kill off the Night Hunter. It looks like Slogan trying to run away. Not sure how far he's going to get. And now that is going to be a inhibitor for the blue side. Sorry that the red side showed up there for a second, but this is most likely the game and the series in favor of Full Spectrum. Yeah, and the fight started to go the way of Team Fish Tacos when you saw that initial engagement from O'Grave being able to do quite a bit. But flashing onto the back line got him in range of the uh, the recall of the Feather Call from uh, Zaya, and that was enough burst damage to really put him in a bad place. And he went into Q and Invisible. I think he was hoping for a non-crit from the Zaya because if that had happened, he would have survived and maybe cleaned up the rest of the fight. But the one crit from Zaya on the last auto attack was enough to burn O'Grave, and the rest of the team fight was completely lost. You had to put all of your cards into the vein. They just wasn't strong enough, wasn't able to make it work. Yeah, and now, ladies and gentlemen, that is actually, I would say that was the series. Congratulations to Full Spectrum. And as we get to, you know, the post game, trying to look at the post game stats, um, I want you to be thinking, Rebel Fox, mm -hmm. who do you think is the MVP of this series? That's a tough one. Uh, I think. An argument can be made for at least three players in that Winston, Villas, and Lutana all did quite a bit. Eclipse and Sudsy certainly had all their moments and plenty of good things. Winston, in my mind, was the most pivotal in terms of team fighting, in terms of being able to turn a lot of these fights and, and really win in terms of the team fight setting in all cases. Velas was the carry. He was the one doing all that. He was like the backbone of the entire thing. And Lutano uh -huh. was surprisingly effective as a support in all of the game. He, he actually had really, really good CS score, or uh, my apologies, vision score. He did all the things the support was supposed to do and supported Winston really well. So Winston and Lutano were both pivotal to the team's success. But Vilas who's your was MVP? Like the ah, that's a tough one. I gotta, I'll give it to Winston. I think Winston's Winston. Winston. I was also going to pick Winston from the beginning because I felt like his impact on the game was very pivotal, particularly, mm -hmm. especially when he just like, he showed his dominance, like full T posed in front of three members there in that fight <laughs> around the dragon pit. That, that just sold it for me. And I think Winston, sir, congratulations. You are MVP of the series. And Rebel, I want to thank you for joining me on this cast tonight. It was, I know it was a little bit of emergency for both of us, but I think we put out a pretty good product. Yeah, it was phenomenal. I love talking about teams at this level and, uh, you know, giving, giving great commentary to great League of Legends, and it's my favorite thing to do, so I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we are actually going to send it over to our main stream for the 100 Thieves and NEXT versus Rise Black uh, game. We will see you over there in the chat. Thank you. Goodbye and good night.